Hi and welcome to the Windybug Fundamentals User Mode course here on Pentester Academy. My name is Pavel and I'll be your guide throughout this course. Now let's take a look at some advanced features breakpoints have. Up until now we've used the BP command to set an unconditional breakpoint, which means whenever the breakpoint hits I want to stop at, uh, at that breakpoint and look at what's going on in that case. However, it is possible to create conditional breakpoints that only hit when certain conditions apply. So for example, we can prefix the BP command with a thread index, thread ID, and tell the debugger that we only want to break in that particular location when that happens when that we form that particular thread. And that could be very useful when we're debugging something which is highly multi-threaded and perhaps many threads hit the same function so it would be a mess if we kind of started and worked with multiple threads trying to access the same breakpoint. It would be easier to just follow a single path from a single thread so that the others just don't intermix. So we can do that as well. The other thing we can do is run any set of commands, of debugger commands, when the breakpoint hits. And that allows us to create a conditional breakpoint in the sense that we can test some condition and if that condition is satisfied, we can break. Otherwise, we can continue execution uh, or vice versa, of course. Another thing we can do is specify a hit count, meaning that we're not going to break the first time the breakpoint hits, but the, uh, any other index that we want, so, such as if you provide two here for passes, it means that the second time the breakpoint hits, that's actually going to be hit. And so this is a fuller way to use the BP command, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. Another form of breakpoint that is supported is a breakpoint on access of some memory location. So this could be useful when I have some memory that is being changed and I have no idea by who. I don't know which code path actually changes that memory and I need to find out. So I can use the BA command, which is short for break on access, by providing the type of access that I want, whether that's going to be executable, read or write, the size of the data that I'm looking at. It must be one of the uh, native CPU sizes that is one, two, four or eight uh, bytes and the actual address which must be aligned uh, depending on the process type. And again, we can prefix that by a thread identifier and have some uh, commands execute if that breakpoint hits. Lastly, there's the BM command, which is another form of breakpoint setting. And the BM command is useful when you want to set multiple breakpoints uh, on several locations like functions that have very similar names, but still you want to hit breakpoints in all these functions without specifying them one by one using BP or BU. So let's see some examples of these uh, commands. So I have my application here running and I've attached the debugger to that uh, application. And so currently if I go ahead and run this and I specify values for calculating prime numbers, I get uh, some result. So let's suppose I want to make sure uh, or perhaps break when the first value has a certain uh, value or a certain range. So how, how do I do that? So let me uh, break back uh, to the debugger. And so one thing I can do is use the BP command like previously. And in this case, I can go ahead and specify the address as a function name, or I can go ahead and use, uh, use source file. So I can do something like sample app and uh, the source file will be, let's say a primes calculator dot CPP. And I can specify a, a line number like uh, six. So this would be a, a standard breakpoint, if you will. And um, we can go ahead and just, of course, open that source file to make sure that I know what I'm doing really. And this is the same as like we did previously, but with actually uh, using the, the editor itself. So you can see that indeed line number six is right here. And so this is one way to specify a breakpoint by using a line number if I have source code available. So this is equivalent to just going ahead and, and breaking that by uh, specifying uh, or clicking in this uh, left area. So that's one thing I can do. But I want to do some more. I want to provide some form of conditional breakpoint. 
And so what I can do here is really run any command that I want. So I can go ahead and do something like echo, um, let's say, um, I don't know, uh, find primes, that's the, the function name. Uh, and, uh, and then I'm going to do a, a GC command, which is go with the way uh, go was specified initially. And so if I go ahead and redefine that breakpoint and I click go now, I go back to my application, hit calculate. So notice we get this find primes uh, output, but the debugger doesn't break. And so the breakpoint uh, is now turned into something which we can call trace point. If you're familiar with Visual Studio, it has support for trace points. And so this is essentially a trace point. I can write some output and then continue uh, running without a breaking at all. So that's one option. The other option is to, to make, to use some conditions. So I can do something like this. I can use if here, and then I want to look at the variable uh, first, for instance. And if that's uh, greater than 100, then let's say I want uh, to break. That means I don't want to do anything else or else let me uh, do the GC command again to continue uh, execution. So I can do something like this because we have these uh, keywords that are supported by the debugger. So let's see if that actually does what I hope it will do. So let me uh, continue execution. So let's see if the value of first is greater than 100, we should break. So with three, we shouldn't break, but we break anyway something must have gone wrong here. And the problem here is, is very subtle. You can't really guess that very easily, is the fact that this first parameter here is actually the address of first. It's not the first value itself. So I have to use another expression here called uh, dword. so that's DWO, which actually uh, dereferences that variable and treats that as a dword value. So let's try that. Let's go and try number three, and we really don't break. So we expect to break only when the uh, number is uh, beyond 100. Let's see if that actually works. Let's go with 101, and we still don't break. Um, maybe you can guess the reason. Let's go with 300. Do we break? And we do. And the reason here is because uh, the default base is hexadecimal. And so this 100 is really 100 in, uh, in hexadecimal. So if I wanted to be decimal value, I have to specify a zero N. And now I should be able to break any time the value is above 100. And so we break. And so this may be a bit confusing, all these uh, syntax things. And that's because this is one of two syntaxes that are supported by, uh, by the debugger, and this is called the MASM syntax, the Microsoft Assembler uh, syntax. There's another syntax that is, that is supported, which is the C++ syntax evaluation. And we can actually change the default by using an appropriate command called expr, uh, but um, we can also change the evaluation uh, syntax by using two at signs uh, for a particular expression. So if we do that, this should be now equi equivalent to looking at the variable itself without having to kind of guess how to dereference every variable name because by default in Masson syntax, variable names are, re are really addresses. And so it can get uh, confusing. Uh, it requires some experience and some uh, trial and error in, in many cases. So let's go and see if that actually works. Let's start with a small number. We don't break. Let's go with 101 and we do break as we hoped. Another thing you should note is that if you try to do these things uh, in the actual line where the function is declared or at the start of the function just by specifying its name, that's not going to work as you uh, perhaps expect. And so let me uh, disable breakpoint number uh, zero here for line number six. Notice it's shown as a hollow circle, which means disabled. Let me continue execution now and see if that actually works. So let's go ahead and hit calculate and we don't really uh, break uh, at all. And the reason for that is uh, the fact that if we break in the start of the function, the various variables have not yet been 
populated by the call. So if I go ahead and make this uh, breakpoint now unconditional, let's see this in action, let's go ahead and break now. So we're breaking unconditionally. So notice when we look at this particular line where we break at exactly the start of the function, notice that the values of first and last here are garbage. And so this is completely garbage and that's why the break didn't uh, happen before because the comparison was to these uh, values which when looked as an unsigned values are not really something you want to, uh, to check against. And so it was working in a sense but the values uh, don't match uh, very well. And so it's better to go ahead and uh, break on the next instruction which uh, means that the function hasn't started running yet, but the local variables, the parameters, uh, to be exact, are filled in uh, appropriately. And so this uh, syntax, syntax thing is, is fairly complex and perhaps not as easy as we would like it to be, uh, but this is just the way it is. And it really takes some experience. You can read the documentation regarding all these uh, syntax uh, stuff to see how to work with proper uh, expressions. So the other thing I wanted to show you here is using the, the BM command, the breakpoint on some uh, pattern. And so if I go ahead and look at my application symbols here, let's say I have this C main uh, dialogue uh, class here, I can go ahead and examine all the symbols there. And currently I find nothing because I misspelled C main uh, DLG. So that should be something like that, <laughs> not like that. Okay, with just one M, we can see all the symbols here that are available. And by the way, that requires private symbols. And by default, we didn't really get private symbols in the previous demos because by default, Visual Studio 2017 doesn't uh, provide private symbols, uh, but instead provides public symbols with access to the source code if I do have access to that. So if you want to change that, by the way, you can go to the properties of your application if you're using Visual Studio and go to the linker debugging setting. And here you can see that there is a, a, a default, which is this one, debug information that says, hey, use some default. And the default actually has changed from Visual Studio 2015 to 2017, when 2015 it was really full containing all the private symbols. And uh, with 2017, the default has changed to be uh, this uh, fast link uh, option. And so I have to go ahead because I'm using Visual Studio 2019 and use debug full here to get the full debug information. And of course, we can go ahead and, and make sure by looking at loaded modules and see that we have here private symbols and that C, as I mentioned earlier, indicates we have a source code. And so that gives me the list of all the functions that are part of C main DLG. And so the BM command can be used to set several breakpoints at once by using some pattern matching uh, using wildcard. So I can do something like my app C main DLG and let's say I want to break it on something. So any function starts with on, I want to break. And indeed the debugger provides these uh, matches based on the wildcard that I've given. So we now have uh, plenty of breakpoints set up in all these on something uh, functions. So if I go ahead and run this and click on the save button, just for as an example, we can see that we break on the on save function here. And we also notice this breakpoint set already in all the other on uh, functions that we find here uh, in the code. And so BM could be useful in these kinds of cases. And of course, it works also on uh, native uh, DLLs where you don't have uh, all the uh, private symbols, but you do have public symbols which are good enough. So for example, I can do something like break on kernel 32 uh, with the create file uh, star uh, function. So that's going to be breaking on create file A and W and 2 and create file mapping and all these things that match this particular uh, pattern. And so that works perfectly fine for uh, public symbols as well. But in this case, I wanted to break on my dialog, which requires the, the private symbols because these functions are not automatically uh, provided by the public symbols. And so BM could definitely be uh, useful in such a case. 
So if we go back to the slides, here's the summary for the expression syntax, which is non-trivial. And so we have these two expression syntax modes, MASAM and C++. MASAM is the default when the debugger is launched. If you want to change that, you can actually do that with the command line parameter when launching WinDebug from the command line or go ahead and use the .axpr command to make the switch to C++ as the default. So that's going to be with slash s and C++ and you can revert back to MASAM anytime you want with the similar syntax. If you use the two at signs evaluation, it actually evaluates in the other syntax. That means not the currently selected syntax. If you want to make sure you're evaluating stuff in C++, you can use the two question marks to evaluate a C++ expression because the normal question mark, which we've used several times, evaluates in the current mode. And so the basic change here is that in Masam syntax, all the symbol names are addresses. In C++ syntax, the type of the value in question is, uh, is meaningful and it's really the way the C++ compiler would have seen that. And so I typically find that using the C++ evaluation is easier and more natural to me, at least because I'm uh, doing a lot of uh, development. However, Masam syntax is the default, so you need to kind of uh, look at that. And if you find that your conditional breakpoints don't hit as you expect, it's probably because something is wrong with the expression and it's not a syntax error, it's just evaluating expressions in a different way than you expect. So again, after some work and uh, experience, you'll probably get the hang of it.